We're up to lesson 20. Lesson 20 is going to be about a fundamental set of concepts in statistics called type 1 and type 2 errors. Okay, so you may have heard of these before and you may even have a vague notion of what they're about. I'm going to try to um, present them in a way maybe you haven't seen before that sort of will structure your thinking about it. And to do that, I'm actually going to draw a matrix. And I like matrices for the way they kind of make us think about things. And what I want to do is think about uh, over here on the left side, our parametric populations. So you recall, um, often when we're doing statistics, we're asking about the truth of uh, differences, hypothesized differences or similarities between two populations. And we can never prove similarities, but we can attach probabilities to differences based upon things like f-tests and analyses of variance. Um, and our null hypothesis about, which is usually that there's no effect, It, it may be if we could actually see the parametric population actually true that there is no effect, there's no additive effect of being male versus female, of being uh, you know a certain size. Um, no matter what our kind of x variable we have, the null hypothesis may be true that there's no effect of our independent variable on our dependent variable, whatever our test happens to be. Um, so this is the truth. This is if we were omniscient, we could see the entire set of individuals that are in our parametric population that we are sampling from. Um, <clears throat> the null hypothesis could also be actually false. That is, there are differences or there's an effect of our x on our y. Okay, so this is, this is um, what the truth is about the parametric populations and it may be that the null hypothesis is truly false and it could be that the null hypothesis is truly correct <laughs> okay so what we are doing when we sample in the real world is we're trying to find out the truth about our parametric populations right and um, there are two kinds of findings we could have. We could have a finding that um, accepts the null hypothesis. In other words, we do our statistical test, and for example, if we had set an alpha level at 0.05, uh, we find that our p-value associated with our statistic, whatever it is, is maybe greater than our alpha level. So for example, greater than 0.05 typically accepted cutoff. On the other hand, with our statistical test and our samples that we got, we could reject the null hypothesis. And in other words, we could find, associated with our statistic, a p-value of less than 0.05. Okay, so um, what have we done here? We've done a statistical test based upon our samples, but this isn't the truth, right? This isn't the actual situation with the parametric populations from which we're sampling. And in fact, we are attaching a probability, and then based on that probability, we're either rejecting the null or we're accepting the null. So what does that mean? Um, I'm going to actually change pen colors here uh, to indicate what that means. So let's take a green pen color here and go in this region here. So um, if we if the parametric population, the null hypothesis is actually true and our statistical test accepts the null, then here we are in this region, okay? And this is wonderful. You know, we've accepted the null hypothesis and in fact, the null hypothesis is true, okay? So this is an excellent place to be on a given test. So we fail to reject the null when, in fact, the null is true, that's where we want to be. Um, at the same time, 
we might be, uh, the null hypothesis might be false in a different scenario. So our independent variable does really affect our dependent variable and our statistical test in fact rejects it. Well, once again, this is great. You know, this is the truth. Our statistical test with these samples has given us a result which is in fact corresponding with the truth about the parametric populations from which we are um, uh, sampling. Okay, now, obviously I've <laughs> changed the pen to red. Um, we are now uh, in these two zones our statistical test, in this case, has led us to reject the null, but in fact, the null hypothesis is true. So we've said it's false, but the null hypothesis is true. So we are in error here. In fact, this is a type 1 error. All right. Now, this is an interesting one, okay? So we found p less than 0.05 but in fact, um, the null hypothesis is true. There is no difference or there's no effect of x on our y. So we have actually, with our samples, our samples and our particular means we got led us to what is actually an incorrect inference about these parametric populations. So that's why it's called an error. It's actually incorrect. And if we asserted in our publication that there was an effect of x on y, we would be wrong. Right? And what is the probability that we would be wrong? Hmm. It has to associate with our p-value. So, for example, uh, we might get a p-value of 0 0.013, and we've talked about this before when we talked about p-values. Um, this means that there's a 1.3% chance that we could be wrong. In other words, that we could actually make a type 1 error. And usually we're willing to take that chance, and so we go ahead and publish these kinds of results. But the fact is that 1.3% of the time we do that, we're actually incorrect. This is the nature of variable data and the fact that we can't actually peer into the actual true parametric population. But we're trying to find the truth given that limitation. 1.3% um, of the time, if we got that result, we would actually end up being wrong. We have to live with that. Okay, so the other type of error obviously must be over here. This is a type 2 error. And in this type of error, um, x does affect y. In other words, we can reject the no effect hypothesis. Um, but our statistical test has told us p is greater than our alpha, our cutoff. You know, we would have really an alpha here. And whatever it was we set it at originally before we did the test is what we would compare this p to. But basically we're getting p greater than that alpha, and we're saying there's no effect. So we have committed another type of error. It's actually a mistake. Um, now we haven't done anything wrong, so it's not that kind of mistake, but we have ended up on the wrong side of the truth, which is that x does affect y. Um, and the null hypothesis is ex is actually false. Okay, so we have accepted the null, but it's actually false. So, for example, we might have gotten a p equals 0.114. Well, you know that's too high a risk in our view. Usually, if we set alpha of even 0.1, which is a pretty high alpha, um, we would not. We would not reject the null at that point. We would accept the null. It would put us on this side of this line, right? Because the, the di dividing line here with our test is, are we less than or greater than point of, than our alpha, whatever it is? And so um, we have committed a type 2 error. Okay, so the one point I want to make is that this kind of, you think about this as the truth over here. Let's go back. Um, let's go back and, and talk about you know these things as being the truth. <laughs> null hypothesis is true. The null hypothesis is false. Both of those things are what is actually the situation. And then over here we have I should probably put this in black <laughs> because here we have the results of our statistical test. 
we've rejected the null, given our sample, or we, we've accepted the null. Okay, so these are type 1 and type 2 errors. All right, um, I like to espouse a principle in my classes, um, which I call Aaron, just to give it a name. And it really is that uh, errors are inevitable. In statistics, it's kind of sad, but every so often you will commit type one errors and every so often you will commit type two errors. And um, the rate at which you commit those can be controlled to a degree by altering alpha. For example, if we made alpha very low, 0.01, for example, um, it means what? If we make type one errors less often, we would say we would reject the null hypothesis less often? Yeah, because we would less often get a p-value that small, right? So we will be in this region much less often, but what does that mean? That means that we will commit type two errors much more often, right? We'll be over in this region more often. And so in the next video, uh, I want to talk about protecting against type one and type two errors. But basically the point I wanna make here is it's not so difficult to think about these types of errors and what they actually mean. So type one, we're rejecting true null hypothesis. Type two, we're accepting a false null hypothesis. And both of those are actually not good in the sense that they are not telling us the truth about our parametric populations. Okay, so there we go. Type 1 and type 2 errors.